Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get a simple match move done with the nodes. And this is how it looks. This is how the finished product is going to look. And we're tying this on to the background like that. That's a pretty good job. Um, but it is limited. It's not like working in the Fusion panel where you've got a lot more uh, compositing and tracking abilities. So all we need to do is drag in a clip to your timeline. Here is just this simple little clip. And that's all I've got. I just separated this in two so you can see a finished product and yet a non-finished product. And then you drag an item. Hit this so you can see both panels. And this is the tree, which uh, has an alpha channel already cut out. So what we're going to do is take our clip, standard clip here, this short one, and the timeline, and go to Color. Now I have my Media Pool exposed. If it's not open, just hit the Media Pool button up there and your Media Pool will be up. I put it in a bin so it's easier for me to work. And bins are right-click, New Bin, and enter your bins, drag things in there, and you have a little bit of order. So you can see here, this is what the setup is. That gets this. So we're going to do this from scratch. I'm going to take my clip. This is the node. You just do a search here in your open effects. Click on that. That brings up all your effects. Do match move. You will drag your match move directly onto this line and it will automatically put its own node in there. This is a tracking and compositing node. As I said, it's limited. You're not going to get uh, a lot of the things uh, that you're going to get with the Fusion panel. But it, in a pinch, it can give you some stuff. So the other thing I need to do is what we'll be doing is something which they state in their manual. So what it says is go to your media pool and right click on your media that you want to put in as a, as a mat for overlay. And it will come up with, as you right click on it, it'll say add as mat for a color page clip. Well, it doesn't do that. <laughs> and this is DaVinci Resolve 16.2.2. So the latest on this particular date. And uh, it still isn't uh, being reflected accurately. So ignore that, because what you actually can do is just take this and drag it in here, and it becomes its own mat. Simpler. So that's our mat. This is the match move. I need to get the cutout put on here. And again, we've got the match move highlighted. Go to Open Effects Overlay right there. And you're going to click on points to track. Now this is a point tracker. It's not the hybrid tracker. It's not a planar tracker, that sort of thing. So you're going to get varied success depending on the quality of the clip that you've got. Meaning is there a lot of compression artifacts and that sort of thing. And as well as its lighting and that's that sort of thing. So you're this, they just happen to have from a party a uh, piece of tape that were still stuck up on there. I've tried this in several different ways. I've tried to put tracking markers in the corners here, figuring, oh, that's good contrast, that should work. Um, if he results, it really didn't work very well. The other thing you have to look at is if I'm going to put tracking markers here, does my arm and so forth or the camera movement obscure those marks? Okay. And it does not. So you always want to make sure of that ahead of time. So now that I've got my match move set into the line here, and we've got this set to tracking. Output can be disabled at this point. Go here, open FX overlay. Click on one of your trackers, markers, and you will all of a sudden have a tracker. And you can do that again. You can do like four and so forth if you need to corner pin something fairly accurately, assuming your tracking markers are in good position. Now this is where you're going to, you can expand this, and that will be the search area. That means if there's a lot of movement, you want this to be larger. If there's not a lot of movement, then it's not necessary. But you can play with it and see how that works. This is basically what you're focusing on as far as your tracker. 
So if you have things that are very similar, I have two, one next to the other, you don't want to include that. You want to narrow that down just to the single one. So that is how that works. Now the other thing shown here, this little evasive blue square, is basically the information that's going to be used in the track. So they're taking it from the blue channel. Now that I've got my trackers set, I'm going to use two for this particular one. I'm going to go and make sure that I'm at the beginning when I set my markers in this particular case, and I'm going to track forward. Now I've got a Radeon uh, 580 external graphics card, so this was real time. It tracks pretty quickly. And they are GPU optimized, so that's pretty cool. And you can see it holds the track really nicely. The other way that you can see whether or not it holds the track nicely is go from tracking to positioning. Now, in the beginning, I thought, oh, I've got to grab this corner and try to squeeze it. And it's really difficult. <laughs> All you got to do is grab these quadrants and just drag them to where you need. Right there, right up there, right over here. And you can grab it in the middle. It's really pliable. pliable. It's kind of like putty. It's pretty fun to play with. And we're going to set this up. I have uh, my parallel lines that I can use as reference if I need to. It just so happens this is a nice little thing to track with. This position is only the placeholder for the tree or whatever else you happen to put on there. So don't, don't worry about you know anything with that in particular. All this is going to do is help give us a reference to See how well that actually holds when I scan through the timeline here. Oops, there we go. So that is just something that helps us see as it scans through the timeline, how accurate is that? It's pretty good. The only reason I'm getting stuttering is because I am also recording this at a high frame rate, both on a separate program that is recording uh, the audio and another program that's recording the video full screen. Uh, so it's doing all this <laughs> with that graphics card and it's doing a pretty good job. Um, and that holds pretty nicely. You see my arm doesn't get in the way of the tracking markers, so it holds that really well. So now that I've dragged and dropped this from my media pool onto here, that's my tracking mat. So I need to see perhaps how that looks on there. And one way to do that is you start dragging these in like that. And we're going to go, not positioning reference, but composite. So composite will put the tree on there. And you can see that's in there nicely. So that tracks to there. And if I wanted to see it without that line, I just go from compositing and then the output is compositing, and this is what we get. Remember, if you go blend like that, this is keyframeable, so you can put this in and out at particular times, so it's one way to make it appear or disappear. Just a little side note there. So this works pretty well. Now you'll notice I have a stand underneath that tree, or part of the dirt and so forth. You can get rid of that. There are some mild compositing um, things with this. So when you click on this and you go to here, this is the key. The key, you will unlock that. That gives you some pan, tilt, zoom, and so forth that you can play with. Always double click to get it back to normal. Rotate, things like that. So you do get to play with that. And as before, you can keyframe the entire thing. In here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this on the tilt, and I'm going to pull this down. You'll see that there is a boundary line uh, that it disappears with. Okay, So it will go within that frame of that boundary that you put up, and that's how I got that to disappear. So not needed, works pretty well. There we go. So this is how you do a simple match move. Now, <laughs> I went nuts figuring out <laughs> which one of these actually worked 
with this to get this to work properly. This is what you do. You put in your mat, you go from the green to this second green here. You go the top one to the bottom one. And that will give you this. So if I wanted to start adjusting colors and so forth with this, I just go right click here. I'm going to add a serial node and it will automatically put it in line. And on this serial node, now I have all the functions that I need as far as my coloring and so forth. So I can adjust gamma. As you can see, my leaves are changing, my gain, everything else that goes on there. You still have within this field, you can add just a ton of other nodes that you can uh, work on as well. You can, so you can do multiple layers of your coloring, your masking and effects and so forth. Uh, it still is limited. It is not a uh, as powerful as the fusion panel, but hopefully this helps you. So if you need to do something really quick and that can be text or something, it's, it's whatever you put in uh, for this field that has an alpha channel and you don't even have to have an alpha channel You can just put a picture there and hold it up and and whatnot I put up just a picture because I had to make sure I was actually accurate that it would do this I grabbed a standard picture. It's one of my JPEGs uh, that does not have an alpha channel Dragged and dropped it on here. I put the connections where I put this one This one will go up to there. This one goes down to there and the only thing I had to change because it automatically put use Luma for alpha output. I unchecked that and that gave me this solid color right now. So now that's accurate. And so I was not lying to you. So you can use that. So we will put a movie in here and I will take this to here, this top one to the bottom one. And as you can see right here, it'll automatically put use them for alpha. Don't need that. I just want it the way I want it. And guess what? We get the movie. So it works really well. Okay, so when you're messing with this <laughs> and you want to uh, check positioning or composition and whatnot, you really have to go back here and make sure that anything else that you were doing uh, you go back to the open effects and because uh, that'll have you pulling your hair out too. So click back on the match move, uh, readjust this to whatever size you need. Remember it is a match move, so it's up to you to determine its uh, dimensions. Just make sure again that was on the open effects overlay that allows you to play with it. Then switch it back to composition and you will be good to go. Okay. And if you like it, please thumbs up so the YouTube algorithm lets people know my channel is something people like. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. If you like this and you want to see others like this, uh, let me know. And I just, <laughs> I did this because it frustrated the crap out of me because I was trying to figure out different ways of doing it. I've got Mocha, I've got Boju, I've got a lot of different ways of tracking and inserting uh, professionally, but I needed to have something simple, quick, and let's see what I could come up with. And it was not matching what was in the manual and nobody had it quite accurately. So I did this through a lot of trial and error and found that, and I hope you found it informative. Thank you.